Hello, today I'm discussing a case study that I researched where my patient suffered from a stroke which caused the patient to be diagnosed with aphasia. The patient in my study suffered from a left occipital parietal hemorrhage cerebral vascular accident, or what most know it as, is a stroke. Due to the location of the cerebral vascular accident occurring in the left hemisphere of the brain resulted in language damage. The most prominent effect of the stroke was the diagnosis of aphasia on my patient. Aphasia can be broken down into two categories, non-fluent aphasia, which is Broca's aphasia, and fluent aphasia, which is Wernicke's aphasia. My patient suffered from Wernicke's aphasia and a variant of Wernicke's aphasia, which is conduction aphasia. When a stroke resulting in aphasia, recovery from the aphasia varies widely between individuals. Some restoration of language function following a stroke typically occurs in the acute phase of recovery. However, in more severe cases, chronic aphasia will occur and the stroke patient will suffer from persistent communication disorders for years on. That is what happened with the patient in this study. The patient received intensive therapy for 15 years to work on the rehabilitation of his language skills. Now I will discuss the areas of the brain that were affected and the symptoms that resulted due to the damage. The patient was diagnosed with Wernicke and conduction aphasia. With the diagnosis of Wernicke's aphasia, the damage occurred to his superior temporal gyrus. As well, I know he had damage to his acute fasciculus since he was diagnosed with conduction aphasia. The patient suffered with symptoms of alexia, which is difficulty in reading, and alcalculia, which is difficulty with math skills. So this means that the patient has damage to his angular gyrus. Also, due to the acquired apraxia of speech, he must have damage to the inferior parietal lobal. Acquired apraxia of a speech is a motor speech disorder that results in the inability to control the muscles to form words. The patient's reading, writing, and math skills were severely impaired as well due to damage to his parietal somatosensory association cortex. The patient had right visual field neglect, which is caused by damage to the temporal parietal junction and posterior parietal cortex. After a final neurological report was concluded, it reported that the patient had left brain dysfunction involving the posterior parasylvian region and more anterior involvement that may have accounted for the transient motor difficulties and conduction difficulties he displayed. With all the difficulties the patient had due to his stroke, after 15 years of therapy, he made great progress. At the end of his therapy in 2014, which began in 2001, Ranges of tests were administered and they signify that the patient made ample progress in his therapy. He advanced greatly in his language cap capacities, his conversation skills considerably improved, and he made progress in his ability to repeat words. He improved his word finding abilities, which allowed him to discuss different topics successfully. His recognition and visual memory capabilities were intact. His overall improvement was most evident when the therapist compared his scores in general intelligence using the Weschler's Adult Intelligence Scale. During his first assessment, about seven months after his stroke, he was only able to complete three nonverbal subtests. However, in the final assessment at the end of therapy in 2014, his scores on the three subtests increased and he was able to perform most of the subtests. While the patient still suffers from some difficulties overall, he has made great improvements, which allowed him to return to work and for the most part function independently. New connections were made that were once lost in his brain, and this allowed these outcomes to be achieved for this patient. Thank you.